he's got a pumpkin on his head, but he's got like a a normal ish kind of head inside. So I don't know if he's stuck his head in a pumpkin or if he's kind of like grown a pumpkin head. Welcome to Painting Kings of War, two player starter set, Shadows in the North, part three, Scarecrows. These scarecrow miniatures need a little bit of cleanup, just like any hard plastic miniatures. Scraping works fine on these guys. Some of the details are a little bit soft around the fingers, for example, so just be a bit careful with that. On this guy, for example, you can't quite tell whether or not there's like a little wrap around his fingers or whether just the fingers are a little bit miscast. Second part of my preparation is pinning these guys. Gonna drill some holes in the feet, super glue on a bit of paperclip type material glue it into the bottom of the feet and then you can mount them on corks or a bit of, bit of soft wood is what I mount them on. Good for production line painting. You'll see later in the video I do end up taking, taking them off the piece of wood that they're all mounted on in a line but it's definitely a good starting point when you want to spray paint them. Just be a bit careful when you're dealing with the bits of metal paper clip and the drill. You don't want to put that in your thumb. The models have been primed with Vallejo Surface Primer, German Red Brown. You could use any kind of sort of reddish brown primer if you wanted to get a similar result. And then they've been sprayed from above pointing downwards with white ink. Could use some thin down white paint, but I've really found the ink goes through the airbrush well. Now that white ink doesn't give a really strong white, um, doesn't come out really strong over the, the red undercoat. So I'm dry brushing some opaque white paint on top here just to make some of the details stand out, certainly around the clothing and on the weapons. Here we can see an example of a scarecrow against one of the spectres that I've already painted. The red undertones on the skeleton should make for a warmer skin colour. I want these guys to have a kind of yellow zombie type skin as opposed to the more more of the blue and the red that's on the spectres although these scarecrows will also have some of those same tentacles just to a lesser extent mixing in some agaros dunes into the gilliman flesh on that top mix there mixing in some Skeleton Horde into the Gilliman Flesh on the mix on the right. So we've got just Gilliman Flesh, Gilliman Flesh and Agaros Dunes, and Gilliman Flesh and Skeleton Horde. Starting out with the Agaros Dunes and Gilliman Flesh mix here. It's really nice, sort of yellowy, dead skin type of look. This comes out really well. Contrast paint that I'm applying here is just the two contrast paints together. I didn't thin it down. I wanted it to cover quite well. I'm just letting the contrast paint do its thing really, letting it pull. I don't mind if these skin tones look bruised and blemished. It doesn't have to be perfect, I just want it to be quite quick, but to you know, look pretty good on the tabletop. Using a really big brush here, size 6, cheap synthetic brush. As long as the tip's quite sharp, it's totally fine for using contrast paints. Got to kind of remember that the contrast paints sort of flow off the end of the brush rather than needing to be painted on like an opaque paint would be painted on. More like a wash. Really don't need a expensive sable brush for this kind of work. Not in my opinion anyway. I don't know for certain, but I do wonder if there's a little bit of green in the Agaros Dunes or the Gilliman Flesh, probably in the Agaros Dunes. Both the Agaros Dunes and the Skeleton Horde do have a, that slightly green tint to them. You know, maybe it's just, just me looking at it, but it feels like there is. But again, that works great for this as a zombie sort of flesh. This is the mix with the Skeleton Horde. 
straight away you can see this a lot thinner i think that's just really the just the saturation level on the agarost dunes is higher than on the skeleton horde which kind of totally makes sense because this is for painting bone it's not meant to be really yellow it's also designed to be painted over the wraith bone undercoat from games workshop so i'm not really painting it over the top of a surface that it was designed for but that's what I really love about this method of painting. I think it, I think it comes out really well. You can see when I turn the model around, and you can see the darker areas where the red's showing through. That you've got sort of instant shading, basically. And then you add the contrast paint on top, and it's making the shadows nice and warm, where there's more of a ready pink undercoat showing through. I think it's a really good way of getting models looking good on the tabletop really quickly. So here's the skeleton horde guy definitely not the same color as the agros dunes and again there's 20 of these guys in the unit so I want them all to look a little bit different so if you've seen my video for the spectres you kind of know what's coming here mainly going for the sort of dark blue clothing on the on the scarecrows in the same way that i did with the spectres on a few of them i've used the green ink instead mixed with some of the uh, black templar contrast paint and a bit of uh, contrast medium just to make it less opaque kind of see here that i'm taking this quite careful because i don't want this going on the skin you can also see the end of my brush has got a tiny little hook on it which is basically what you're always going to get with synthetic brushes but as long as you know that it's there it doesn't really make this brush any less useful for painting these models so first up that brush probably cost i don't know something like 30p 50p maybe got them in a large pack and even though it's been used a lot and it is starting to hook a little bit it's still perfectly usable so much so actually that i bought uh, another pack of 10 or 20 of these guys stuck them in the drawer they're ready to go i've got a young nephew that's interested in painting as well bought him a pack last christmas i think they're perfect beginner brushes and absolutely ideal for this type of painting, this technique. Turn the model upside down every now and again, that's partly to get ease of access to the areas I need to paint, like on this little, lovely little crop top here. Um, but also let's, helps the gravity draw the, the quite thin contrast paint mix into the, into the grooves, which are meant to be the shady areas. I'll just go over it a little bit here and there while it's still wet if I need a little bit more on the model just got to be really careful same as when you know you're painting washes that you don't let it drip all the way down the model and pull you know triple down the legs or when you've got it you know when you've held it upside down like this you don't want it sort of dripping down onto his face that kind of thing so you know it's putting quite a lot on but in a reasonably controlled manner I mean you can see it just took me about sort of five minutes of real time to paint the clothing there so it's not super quick because you have got to be careful snake bite leather straight out of the pot this stuff i really like i totally rate this for painting leather obviously putting this on quite thick I, i'm not using it like a a normal glaze it is like the contrast paints meant to be used kind of like a, your layer and your wash all in one there's a bit of texture molded into the hats on these guys so it works perfectly for that. There, you can see underneath that the um, red primer is really, uh, really visible there. So straight away, painting the snake bite leather over the red will give a much um, darker effect, more, much more warmth into the shadows than you'll have to see on the top of the hat, which is basically going over white. Yeah, I think that snake bite leather contrast paint is one of my favourites. I really like all the natural colours. Ultramarine's blue, in my opinion, is a little bit rubbish. Some of the other um, primary colours maybe aren't so good as well, but I really like these natural colours. I'm 
straight out of the pot again. This is the Wildwood. I really like this one as well. It's a brilliant, uh, in my opinion, a brilliant uh, sort of like a base layer for like a brassy, a brassy kind of color, almost like a, a starting point for a non-metallic metal brass. Slightly reddy brown, basically. No, I really like it. That's partly why I'm going to paint the metal as well. I decided, yeah, this will just do. This will be fine for a, a rusty blade. It'll make the blade stand out a little bit, a um, little bit different than the ones on the Spectres, which I undercoated in Black Templar. Uh, I thought I'd leave this in because I made a mistake um, with the Wildwood. I, I got a bit too quick with it. It started pooling around the hands, so you can just whip that off with a, um, a clean, wet brush. There we go, that's what we've got so far. Paint the tentacles and that could just be put on the tabletop and it's ready to go. Uh, now this mix here is for one of the model variants that comes with the Scarecrows. Old pumpkin head. I can't quite work out what's going on with this guy, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. Like He's got a pumpkin on his head, but he's got like a, a normal-ish kind of head inside, so I don't know if he's stuck his head in a pumpkin or if he's kind of like grown a pumpkin head as part of his transformation into some kind of half zombie, half alien. I'm, I'm not really sure, but I didn't like the look of these um, these pumpkin heads when I saw them on the sprue. But when I put them on, I painted them and how the orange came out there. I really liked it. So I'm glad I've got a few of them in the unit. Yeah, we're just going back to the other guy now. We're going to paint a bit more using Magos purple. Got some straight Magos purple down the bottom of the palette there. Basically going to just mix two different colours, uh, purpley blue and a purpley red. Just using the game colour inks there with the Magos purple. When I painted the Spectres I was also using some of the contrast medium and I had to do quite a number of layers for it to work well. I just decided this is meant to be a speed paint job so I'm going to ditch the contrast medium and work on the basis that the contrast paints are already somewhat diluted with medium and it actually works fine if you don't mind the colours being reasonably bright and vibrant which is what I want with this with this army now don't have to be particularly careful here because uh, the, the blue colour of the jeans or whatever those clothes are is darker than what we're painting and if I get a little bit of the red on the legs again I'm not all that bothered how I like these to look is um, for the tentacles to change colour between the red, the purpley red and the purpley blue, I think it just adds some interest than just having just blue tentacles or just red tentacles. These contrast paints and inks mixes, they can just be mixed straight on the model, which you can see I'm doing here. So put the red down and put the blue down and just work between the back and forward between the two a little bit while they're wet on the model. Works fine, has a good result. I mean, you can see there, it's like a, a minute maybe. Could just leave it there, but I'll work it back and forward a little bit. Just going back in with the red because I felt that it didn't stand out quite enough. another guy with a tentacle leg just sort of showing really that you could paint it back the other way start with the blue bring the reds in you can see there that red didn't come out very well um, I needed to mix a little bit more on the palette I'm gonna use some of the purpley red mix for the tongue just sort of around the gums on some of the models that have kind of got gums now that tentacle is dry there but I realized that the red on that model didn't look strong enough so just glazing a little bit more over the top which is where these paints work really well you can just go back in with the same mix and glaze it back over the top Angle Ross Dunes here straight out of the pot onto the teeth kind of acting like a wash I'm using some ivory paint here just to pick out the teeth 
Nagaros Dunes gives a good yellowy wash, some rotten teeth, and using the ivory paint to highlight them a little bit. I mean, in real life, these guys probably would have black teeth, certainly not white. They wouldn't be ivory, but on the tabletop, we want the teeth to stand out. It's uh, one of the most prominent parts of the model. I'm using ivory here, but later on I switch over to elfic flesh, which I prefer. I think it... I just like it. It, it, it's le it feels less chalky than the Vallejo model colour ivory. It's just a comparison between the guy on the left had his teeth highlighted and the one on the right hasn't. Yeah, some of these models have got really wonky teeth. I, I think they're a really good feature of these Scarecrow models. I say the Scarecrow models, just you use the heads on the Scarecrows and the Spectres. Um, yeah, they're a really nice feature on a, on a face that actually doesn't have that many features. You know, there's no eyes, there's no nose on any of these. It's literally just the mouth. So I've got a new light at this point of the video recording, so you'll notice that the camera angle change and the models look a little bit more vibrant. That's really just the light, which I did review if you want to have a look at it. I, I recommend the light. I'll give you a quick spoiler alert there. I'm going to finish these guys off now just by painting the weapons. You remember they were undercoated with Wildwood contrast paint, just using some steel colour from Vallejo with a scraggy old brush to give them a dry brush in the direction that we think the blade would be marked all over wash with agrax earthshade don't need to be careful with that now we're using vallejo gaming skin wash while the agrax is still wet i'm going to drop it into certain areas and this is going to give a really quick and easy rust effect You can see when it dries, it dries quite matte. And, you know, I think that's a really good, quick rust effect. You can get better rust effects for sure, but that was, you know, you could do the whole 20 guys in the unit in less than two or three minutes. Going back in with the old scruffy brush, using some Vallejo Silver, it's a very bright color. So just being really careful here to just pick out the sharp edges just to give it a bit more highlighting back on the back on the blade. Here we are, here's, here's what it looks like finish. I, I think it looks pretty good for a tabletop model. Like I said, there's going to be 20 of them in the unit. We don't want to spend absolutely ages on these guys. When I'm on the tabletop, looking good, that's what this project's all about. If you watch my Spectres video, you'll know that I'm trying to get these done to a decent standard without spending too long on them, but trying out some techniques that I haven't used that much before. That's where the whole contrast paints over a Zenithal undercoat comes in. Trying something new, mixing it up a bit with the different coloured undercoats. Yeah, let me know what you think. I think they came out pretty well. Not going to win any awards, but nice tabletop job. Give us a thumbs up if you liked the video. Leave some comments if you didn't. There's things that could be done better things that you'd have done differently. I'm really keen to know what you think of this technique for this kind of a paint job and whether you think it's a good way to beat that procrastination that we all get, whether this is a good way to get a, a project done, you know, a fairly big project like a painting a whole starter set. I want to get this whole starter set finished and based. Well, we'll see if I see if I manage it. I definitely will though, that's for sure. Okay, thanks very much.